Welcome to another video. My name is Andy and I'm a 27 year old full time videographer. And today I want to share with you how to get into festival and concert videography. Every videographer and photographer dreams of shooting their favorite artists. I'm not different. I love EDM, trap, future bass and hip hop. And that's why it's so great that I can share with you my experiences, how I got into festival videography. My first gig was a hip hop artist named Lecrae, a very, very big rapper from the US. And it was amazing. I shot for him at a festival in Sweden and you can check out the whole story right here. And my second festival was a big deal, a broad fest in Barcelona. That was a passion project for a long time. And I got to shoot amazing artists like Cruella, like Rez, Zed's Dad, Griffin, just amazing artists. I would never have thought of that. I will shoot them in the near future, but that's what I did. And I want to share with you how I got to those gigs. First of all, let me tell you that this industry is very hard to get into and even harder to make money out of. So. I don't recommend you to do it for the money. If you're a freelancer, stick to your other sources of income because this is more for fun and for the experience. Eventually, you'll be able to charge at some point, but this takes a while and a lot of experience. You definitely have to have some portfolio work just to show them that you're able to capture some photos or videos. Then it's also important that you provide them value. That means you have to think about what value do you bring them? Are you shooting for a specific publication? Do you have a big audience? Are you shooting for yourself? Are you doing it for your portfolio or do you want to help them out? So just make clear that you make sure that you provide them value and let them know it. All right, but how do we get those media passes to enter festivals and concerts? So to shoot a concert or festival, you usually need a media pass or a AAA all area access pass. There are two ways to do that. You can go over the festival or concert organizer and just contact them directly. You can do that via their website, per email, you can call them, you can DM them on Instagram, but usually they're not very interested because they have their own media team. So make sure again that you can provide them value that other people can't bring them. Make sure you find out who's responsible for marketing, for PR, for media people, just to contact them directly. Communicate them what value you bring them and then of course showcase your portfolio and your work, what you have done so far. And number two is in my opinion, the better way, go directly with the artists. Usually again here, the big artists have their own media team. So it's very hard to get in contact with them, with their managers or just even get a chance. So my tip is to look for smaller acts who are doing the warm up or just playing at the festival or concert and contact them. And because they're smaller, they don't have a media team all the time. So that makes sense for you to step in and provide them value. You can either work for free or just offer them your help and maybe they are able to get you a media pass. All right, let's talk about gear. Bring as little as possible. That's the most important part about concert and festival videography. You will sweat a lot. You will run around a lot. You will crash into people. So don't bring too much stuff. Also, you can store your stuff like somewhere where it's safe. So I would recommend you to keep all your stuff with you. And that means you have to bring as little as possible. I brought my a7 III with the 16 to 35 f4. And then I also brought the 50 millimeters 1.8. Then I also brought two batteries and a dust blower. And I all carried that in this bag right here. That's a Patagonia bag. It's nine liters. It's amazing. You can throw it over your shoulder and run around and you have your front free to shoot. And if you want to swap lenses or something, you can also put it in the front and just put your stuff in here and then change lenses, get your dust blower out. And you can even have a water bottle inside here, which is very neat. So I highly recommend you to bring a small bag which is very mobile and um, yeah, can fit all your gear. Then I also brought only one memory card, which is the 256 gigabytes. And that's totally fine, even for 4K. No gimbal for me. I don't like shooting with gimbals. And for me, it's just a hassle to just set it up and everything. So I would not recommend you to bring a gimbal when you're alone. When you're shooting in a team, that's definitely an option. So there is one person to shoot the very nice and smooth gimbal shots and, and another person who's just running around and getting like close up shots and emotions and everything. Quick tip, please use earplugs. I know they look sometimes very ridiculous and they feel very stupid, but it's so worth it. Trust me. You want to enjoy to listen to music for a long period of time. So use them. Okay. Also always bring gum on every shoot. Just bring it. You will, you will thank me later. So shoot day comes. How do we behave? 
So the first day is actually very, very nerve-wracking. I know that. But arrive early. That's the most important part. Arrive early to show respect to the organizers and to the artists. You can check out the venue first. You can get test shots. You can talk to people. And of course, get your media pass. And to get the media pass, it very depends on the organizers. One time I got it beforehand, the other time I got it right at the location, so this really depends. You should definitely have the name of your contact person in mind or even a phone number so you can call them and contact them in case you are lost. Always talk to staff and securities on location. They're usually very, very friendly and helpful. All right, and as soon as you enter the venue, it's very important that you check out the venue to its maximum. Check out where you can go, where you can shoot. If you can enter certain areas like VIP, the pit, or even backstage. And then also get some test shots like I did here at a Broadfest. It's really important that you set up your camera right, get the settings right, get the white balance right, and then also think about compositions you wanna have later when the people are coming in. So how to film festivals and concerts? So there's the pit in front. That's very important to know that you should enter the pit in the first three songs because usually they will kick you out after the third song or they're not very allowing it to enter after the third song because artists should focus on performing and not you having the camera up in their face. So that's the rule of thumb for the pit. Enter the pit for the first three songs. For myself, I always shoot wide angles the first song and then afterwards close-ups. The pit is the perfect location to get some really nice shots of the artist and then you have to also focus on the crowd because the first row is also very dedicated and they're always very emotional. The initial performance is also amazing because there are so many emotions like the artists are sometimes jumping into the front of the stage, sometimes the crowd is screaming and crying and there are so many emotions. So think about what you want to capture. Do you want to capture the artist or do you want to capture the crowd? So think about it beforehand and get your wide angle out. After the first song, I usually switch to my 50 millimeters to get more of the bokeh, of course, and then also more of the close-up shots. In the pit, you can get special angles of the artist and also of the band, and then of course of the crowd as well. Make sure you capture all sides, all angles, and shoot as much as you can in the pit because you're just having a limited time frame. After the pit, I walk to the back of the crowd and try to get one of the very nice wide angle shots of the crowd and the stage in front and looks very majestic and massive and how many people are there. So make sure you bring a wide angle, at least a 24 millimeters. So it looks very, very nice. And I just love those shots. I get a few of those and then I switch to my 50 millimeters. The rest of the time I just capture as many emotions as I can. That's for me the most important part of the video, emotions. Especially with concerts and festivals, people are so energetic and emotional and that's so nice to capture. If you look into Tomorrowland, EDC and all the big after movies, you will always see so many emotions. Laugh, love, partying, excitement. It's just important to capture all those moments. So that's why I slap on my 50 millimeters and I go into the crowd. What I also recommend you to do is of course to vibe with them. If you know the song, sing with them, dance with them so they will open up to you and the shots look very very nice if they open up to you and not only stage their smile to you so you will see that it will just open their heart and the shots will look much better. Also keep in mind that some people get very very mad if you try to get in front and they don't know that you're a videographer if you bring a DSLR like this or a mirrorless camera. Always get your camera, not this one, your proper camera and hold it up high and wriggle through the crowd so they will see your camera and usually they will be much more friendly and let you through. All right, and a few tips to film. Of course, you can uh, yeah, shoot in low aperture, low ISO and all those things. That's nothing new. But what I recommend you to do is with the close up shots that you get very, very close. That means you should be able to see the white part of the eye. That makes a much more interesting shot. And I see it more than ever that people just holding the camera into the crowd, but not thinking about the shot. So that's very important to capture emotions because emotions always are starting with the eye. Then of course, use the foreground, which is always important like this shot right here. Make sure that you're just going a little bit lower to get the low ground, get the railings, get some like lights or whatever is in the way just to use it to your advantage if you can. Not always, but it's nice to make the shot a little bit more interesting. Then another tip is to bring in movement. That's just a general tip, but this works especially well in festival and concert videography if you're having static shots because this shot is not very interesting. You can always go from left to right, from right to left, top down and all those things. And even this little movement makes the shot much more interesting and it will look much better. Then you can also move with artists and crowds. Like for example, if people are jumping, you can try to capture the speed of their jumps. 
or this shot here with the Spanish artist Garabato. He's doing this move right here and I try to capture the speed of his movement and then use the last move to transition to another shot. And that's the next thing, especially in festival and concert videography, you will see a lot of people using in-camera transitions, whippings to the left, to the right, or as I said, like from top to down and then starting the next shot from top to down again. And it's just very, very interesting. And because of festivals and concerts, nature of their pace, it's just important because the speed is high up anyway. So you can use it to your advantage when you're editing and post. And these were my tips on how to shoot music festivals and concerts. I can only recommend you to do it because it's so much fun. It's for me the most fun I ever have. Like that's comparable to going on a trip or something. It brings me so much joy and I hope it will bring you as much joy as me. And the editing as well, it's just so much fun. I hope this guide was helpful. If it was, please leave me a like and also don't forget to subscribe. And please drop me a comment down below if you have any questions or you can follow me on TikTok and Instagram. I answer on every single question. Good luck with your move and good luck with all the festivals. I'll see you next time.